If I worked at Samsung or LG or Sony or Motorola, I'd be worried. Here's everything you need to know about Google's Pixel and Pixel XL in about a minute. Let's start with the smaller Pixel. Its Snapdragon 821 chipset isn't a huge leap over the 820 we've seen in other flagships, but Google has spent a lot of time tuning touch response times and app launches. The end result is a phone that feels astonishingly fast. The Pixel's 12.3 megapixel camera is also now my all-around favorite smartphone camera out there, and Google's Assistant can be remarkably useful, even more so than Siri in a lot of ways. The Pixel does have some shortcomings though. It's more expensive than most of Google's old Nexus phones, and the phone's design leaves a lot to be desired. I also wish the Pixel was more water resistant, a trait most of its biggest rivals have completely embraced. Then there's the Pixel XL, which takes everything good about the Pixel and supersizes it. I actually prefer the XL for a lot of reasons. Beyond the great camera and performance, the XL's 5.5 inch Quad HD screen is beautiful, and its bigger battery keeps the phone running for well over a day. And despite those bigger parts, it's actually very comfortable to hold. The usual caveats still apply though, it's expensive, weak against water submersion, and not all that great looking. Google building its own phone is a bold move, so a bold look would have been nice too. Ultimately, the Pixel and Pixel XL are impressive first steps for a company that's never designed and built phones before. Seriously, some of my biggest complaints are things that could be easily fixed next year. They're not right for everyone, but anyone looking for a powerful new smartphone and a taste of Google's mobile future should pay close attention to these devices.